What are the best tapas bars in Seville? This city is packed with tapas bars, which makes it so hard to know where to go. But today in the historic center, I'm gonna hit five of the best tapas bars in this city, and I hope you'll join me. Hey Spain lovers, I'm James Blick and welcome to Spain Revealed. This channel is all about helping you explore Spain like a local. And today here in Seville, I'm gonna be joined by my friend and Devour Tours colleague, Kyra. And we're gonna hit five of her favorite tapas bars, a mixture of traditional and modern. And look, the first time I came to the city, I was lost. I was here with my parents, I didn't know where to eat, and we had some really disappointing uh, and expensive experiences and mistakes. So the plan for this video is to help you avoid that by telling you where to go, uh, showing you how wonderful the tapas are in the city and the wine, and everything and well it's gonna be amazing so benga let's go oh a little Easter egg I should explain why my voice sounds like this well we had a big party last night for the devour summit the devour tour summit we're having in Seville uh, and there was a lot of loud music and I was shouting a lot so that's the excuse hopefully I'll be back to normal by the next video we hope Guys, we just got here. Uh, my friend Kyra, Devour Tours, uh, product director, and Edu, her boyfriend. Uh, we're in our first bar, Casa Morales. This place uh, was founded in 1850. It's still in the same family, and it is beautiful. Uh, and what are we gonna have here, Sherry? Sherry, of course. Jerez, Sherry, we're gonna start with Sherry and something light before we head it off, and I'm gonna show you a little bit. This bar has two sections. It has what used to be the old shop, which is here, and then all the tinajas, or wine vats, on the other side, which is where all the wine used to be kept and sold, because effectively, this used to be a wine shop. Shop. Uh, so anyway, let's explore the bar. Okay, so we're in the shop part of the bar. You can see it behind me. Uh, and now we're gonna pass through to where the wine vats are, where it used to be effectively the, the storage room. So we've just come through to the other side of the bar. You can see the old tinajas, the wine vats behind me. And so that was, this is the part that would have operated like almost like a storage place where you came up to fill your container with wine to take home. And I love how this, this bar has two parts. There's a number of places in Seville that, that reflect their tradition by having the kind of the, the wine storage, the wine selling area, and the more shop area. And I'm drinking sherry. I haven't had breakfast. I'm starting with a fino, which is a very light, crisp sherry, totally dry, a really typical drink here in Seville. You'll see people drinking sherry all the time. It's kind of, you know, if you see my videos on Barcelona and people are drinking cava, the equivalent here is sherry. Uh, let's order some food. I need breakfast. Okay, we've ordered some tapas. Now, one of the things here when you're in Seville, Literally, you order tapas from the menu. So you'll see the word, a column that says tapas. And that's the best way to go if you're eating for one or two because it's gonna be small portions and you can eat a lot. So we have here a super, pretty cured looking manchego cheese. Mm. Wow, really flavorful, sharp, almost a little bit spicy. It's delicious. Perfect way to start, goes perfectly with the sherry. Mm, really good. All right. And this one, you're probably wondering, what is this? This is bread, obviously, and it's bacalao, so salt cod, with salmorejo on top. Salmorejo is like a garlicky tomato cold soup and a delicious combination. I'm gonna go on one bite, see how I go. Mm. Super rico. Casa Morales, love this place. All right, I'm going for the second one. So these four little pieces of bread are actually two tapas. And how much are they each, about? So about 250 for two little pieces of bread and about 250 for the cheese. So a typical tapa price in these kind of more traditional places about 250 to 350, right? Yeah. So 250 to 350 is your typical tapa price. So you can kind of figure out and how many tapas would fill up a person? Five tapas? I mean, depends who you're asking, but you definitely want a few to have a Yeah, five tapas meal. maybe. So you can eat pretty cheap in the city. Okay, we're one bar in, and now we're heading to the next place. We've started light with a, with a light drink and some light uh, uncooked tapas, but now we're gonna head to this place, Bodeguita Romero, that is famous for a very local sandwich called a pringa, and man, it is good. Okay, so here we are in Bodeguita Romero. This is a famous place for locals who wanna get some traditional food. It's just around the corner from the last place. You don't have to walk far for a good bar in, uh, in this city. So I'm having a beer. Uh, they've got Estrella Galicia on tap, which I really, really like. So we're gonna try this famous sandwich called Pringa. There's lots of places all over the city that make a Pringa, but these guys are famous for theirs. And this sandwich is small, but packed with flavor. It's got in there pork, it's got uh, chorizo, and it's got uh, blood sausage, morphia, all scrunched together, cooked, grilled, and, and my God, the mix of flavors is like a flavor bomb. All right, I'm going in. Mm, 
the mixture of like, it's almost like flavor of pulled pork, a little bit of blood sausage, um, chorizo, all mixed up in there. It is a, literally, as I say, a flavor bomb. You have to come to this bar and try this blinga. And you, as I say, you'll see them all over the city, but this one is magical. Okay, next dish is carriera, slowly stewed pork cheek. This is a delicious, famous dish that you get here in Seville, and one of the best places to get it is here in Bodeguita Romero. It's been slowly stewed, it just falls away when you when you eat it on a bed of fries, uh, and it's only 370 for this plate. This is the tapa size, remember, stick to those tapa sizes. Okay, I got this huge piece here. It's just like marshmallow, the way it just kind of uh, collapses in your mouth and the flavor is so intense. All right, I'm going back in. So rich, the flavor, my God. You can taste the red wine in there. Perfect, the best carriada uh, I think I've had in Spain. One thing that's incredible about the tapas bars in Seville is the speed with which the food comes out. That stewed pork cheek, and it came out about five minutes after we ordered it. And it, so it makes it such a dynamic experience. These places get so busy, so loud. The waiters are running around. The kitchen's working at a frenetic place and it's packing out. They've, they opened it about midday and this place is heaving uh, and it'll even get busier. It'll, it'll close about 4 p.m. But it's addictive, the energy. Okay, so we've been to two traditional places that are fantastic, two of my favorites. And now we're heading uh, to a modern tapas bar, Palo Cortao. After San Sebastian with its pinchos, it's, it's possibly uh, uh, the best city in this country to eat tapas. All right, before we hit our next bar, I'm just gonna show you a secret little hidden spot here in Seville that I love to, to walk into and check out every time I'm here. So what this is, is uh, the courtyard of a church that's here. But actually this courtyard, which is uh, full of orange trees, was originally the orange grove uh, outside the mosque. So when the Moors invaded Spain in 711 and, and obviously conquered Seville as well, they built their first mosque here in Seville, right here. And we have these orange grove where they would uh, do their ablutions where they'd wash themselves before going into prayer. Now when the Christians arrived uh, and, and took over the city, they just, you, you, you know, you didn't rebuild things. Things. You just took it and you turned it into a church. At some point, they knocked it. It was knocked down, and they rebuilt a church here. But they kept the orange grove, uh, and so here we have that remnant of the Moorish past. And also, you'll see the bell tower was originally where the minaret was, and then the bells were put on top. And also behind me, you can see columns. Those are Roman columns. Uh, so one of these things about Seville, it's just such an incredible mix of all these cultures uh, of the Moors, the Christians, the Romans. I mean, it's mind boggling. All right, little cultural stop done. On to the next bar. So the next place that Kyra's brought us to, Palo Cortao, got a huge list of sherry. They have 80 sherries by the glass. We were just talking to Anna, who's the owner, and she organizes the whole uh, sherry list. If you want to try sherry uh, in, in this city, then this is the place to come. You can be here in the bar area or you can go back into the restaurant. So I've ordered the Monteado, these guys have ordered the Palo Cortado, uh, we're gonna get into it and we're gonna order some food and, and, and pair that sherry with something. So if you're coming to Spain and your concept of sherry is the sweet wine that grandma drank at Christmas, well it's time uh, to get that sorted out. You need to come and try the sherries. Most of the sherries we drink in this country are dry. They're becoming a huge thing at the moment with sommeliers getting really excited about sherry. And if you wanna try sherry the first time you're a little bit scared, uh, ask the person you're traveling with to try it and just have a smell. Wow. It smells of like honey, dried fruits. Again, remember it's dry. Now I'm going to smell Kyra's one. She's got a palo cortado. Wow. It almost smells like a sweet kind of whiskey. I'm not good at picking uh, smells and things like that. I'm hopeless. Yoli is much better. Haven't got her by my side today. But the smell of sherry, the taste of sherry, the flavor of sherry is just remarkable. Uh, So good. Okay, we have this dish that's just been delivered, which is a tuna pate in the shape and color of a tomato. I mean, it's pretty incredible. It's a pate on the inside. We haven't opened it up yet, and it's got a lacquer on the outside, and around it, what looks like soil is olives and mushrooms, uh, and, and then some flowers, and everything is edible. So we're gonna crack, it almost causes me pain to crack this thing open, but we're, no, Kyra's saying there's no pain. We're gonna do it. Okay, we've destroyed the tomato. Uh, Kyra destroyed it. I feel a little bit bad, but she doesn't feel bad at all. And now I have the tuna pate here from the inside, uh, and the olive tap Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. That pate is delicious. All right, next dish we have marinated mackerel on tirabeques, which are these little kind of sweet green peas. Oh wow. Mm. 
Oh my God, that is really good. The mackerel has been like light, very lightly grilled. It's almost raw, but it's warm. And then there's a little like salty, almost like a soy sauce kind of concoction on top. And then the green, slightly sweetness and crunchiness of the peas. It's really, really good. So just when we thought we were able to leave, uh, the very generous and kind Anna appears to have gifted us the most beautiful cheese plate I've ever seen in the world. Uh, it's beautifully laid out with fruits and nuts and of course the cheeses. So we've got payoyo, which is a, a queso de cabra goat's milk cheese from Cadiz. We've got maon, which is a, a cow's milk cheese from Menorca, slightly smoky. And I shouldn't really pick this up, but we're gonna crumble. But we also have here uh, cabrales, which is a mixture of goat, sheep, and cow's milk cheese from the north of Spain, from Asturias. It's been aged in caves in the Picos de Europa. So this is a, a very classic, interesting, and really delicious cheese selection, and, and very generous of, of, of Ana to, to, to bring this to us, and also a glass of palo cortado each, more sherry. Wow. Okay, I'm feeling disgustingly full, but I'm on a mission. I'm doing this for you guys. We have two more spots. Okay, so we've made it to bar number four. We're in a place called Mateo Ruiz, uh, which is famous for its bacalao rebozado. It's also, it's a bar that opened in 1918 by the current owner's father. And it was originally a place where you came to buy wines from Valdepeñas, which was a, a red wine region that distributed wine throughout Spain. Uh, and, and nowadays they're famous for their tapas. It's packed today. You can see the, the writing on the bar, the, you know, the traditional way of keeping the tab by writing on the bar. And what's interesting here is that the owners are, are deaf and it's run by one family here. Uh, and it's a very unique place in Seville and very popular. It is packed, that's why the camera is so close to my face right now. So Kyra just said that this place is just cool. It's just cool. It's just cool, and it is pretty cool. The wine that we have here, the red, Kyra's white, is one euro. It's one euro for a glass of wine, and it's, uh, I'm gonna be honest, it's rough as guts, but it's one euro. Hey, serve chilled. So it's bacalao time, little fried bowls of cod. Ooh. That is very moist. Wow. Perfect. Better. That's yummy. Very yummy. Good bacalao is hard to find and these guys know how to do it. So come here for the one euro wine and the bacalao and the atmosphere. This place is amazing and really hidden. I would never have found this. Back out into the light. Uh, it's pretty dark in there in that place. Very cool place. Very, very cool. Okay. Next stop is Modern Tapas. We've got about a five minute walk to the Alameda. The Alameda is a part of Seville. It's this big kind of esplanade that has uh, Roman columns at one end, actual Roman columns. And it's a, it's a famous place for hanging out in the evening, but there's also this bar called La Azotea. So we're heading there now. Okay, we're at stop number five, La Azotea. Now there are a few of these restaurants throughout the city and they're really famous. And so now we're sipping wine and we're waiting for a couple of tapas that are coming now. Uh, we have all the fresh ingredients in front of us uh, and the kitchen closes in five minutes. So we just made it for this five tapas crawl within our window of about 12 to 4, 4.30. So we did very well and I'm very, very full. Tapas are coming. Okay, so we've got first tapa up of the two. This is a taco de atún de almadraba. Almadraba tuna. And it's with guacamole and some onion on top. And this is going to get messy. So, mm. Oh, and it's a little bit spicy as well. Oh, that tuna is really good. Mm. Really good wine. Here in the Seville area in Andalusia, generally, it's not just sherry that is being made. There are great red wines and great white wines. So if you go to great, uh, particularly the more modern tapas bars, they will more and more be showing the, the, the Seville and the Andalusian red wines. You should really ask them. Ask them what red wine. Tinto Vino they have from Andalusia or Sevilla. Um, because there's some really interesting, delicious stuff. Really delicious. All right, last tapa. Kyra's out. She's done. She's uh. She is finished, but I'm still going. I'm doing it for you guys. So I'm gonna have pulpo octopus with a mole verde, which is a Mexican sauce, uh, and with, with vegetables. So a very different way of eating octopus here. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Yum, wow. So the octopus is perfectly cooked, really tender and juicy. Mm. And then just with that, that mole verde, 
and the vegetables. Really interesting combination. You know, and this is the beauty of Seville, that you can really have a movable feast. You can go from bar to bar, walking through these historic streets, uh, and try traditional, modern, traditional, modern, all these wonderful dishes at these fantastic places with atmosphere, with story, and in all the dishes, they're so ingredient focused, which is the beauty of Spanish cuisine. So, I mean, as I say, six months in Madrid, I could do that. I'll have to ask Yoli when I get home because maybe she'll be keen again, flamenco. Guys, I'm gonna put the names of the bars and their addresses in the description below, and I'm gonna put more bars in the description below, other places you could check out that we couldn't get to today. Thank you to Kyra and Edu for showing uh, me some super cool spots and subscribe if you want to join this community of Spain lovers and explore this amazing country like a local and please go on thumbs up if you liked it my mum will be very happy back in New Zealand so thanks for watching I don't know where we'll be next time in Spain we're in the next video but I'll see you in the next video hasta luego y muchas gracias chao